This particular story has bogged the minds of many for years. It all started when one handsome kid had dreams of making it big. At the young age of 21, Ryan Singleton embarked on a quest for fame when he moved from his childhood home in Georgia to the Big Apple. His goal was to become a fashion model. It wouldn't be long before New York took notice. Ryan had made his big break, earning a highly coveted modeling gig in New York's Fashion Week lineup. Ryan was living the life. He had met a ton of friends and was getting recognition from the top tier of the industry, but he was seeking more. Ryan and his friends packed up and made the big move to Hollywood. Shortly thereafter, he married celebrity stylist Keith Brewster in a lavishly modest ceremony attended by Real Housewife star Cynthia Bailey. Unfortunately, the marriage ended within four months and Ryan found himself back in Georgia. It was then that Ryan showed signs that something wasn't quite right. He went to his mother and said, something bad is going to happen to me, isn't it? His mother responded, what are you talking about? Do you owe someone money? No, mother, it's just, I've done a lot of things to hurt a lot of people, Ryan said. Two days later, Ryan took off to Los Angeles and rented a vehicle. He called his mother while traveling to Vegas and asked her to send him $100 through Western Union. Soon after that call, Ryan's ex-husband called his mother and said Ryan called him and sounded like he may be in danger. While Ryan was traveling back from Vegas, his car broke down in Death Valley. He flagged down the highway patrol who took him to a nearby gas station. There, Ryan would wait for one of his friends from LA to pick him up. But when his friend arrived to the gas station, Ryan was nowhere to be found. Several days later, Ryan's body was found two miles away from the gas station. But Ryan's organs were missing. The only trauma to his body was a skull fracture. The case is still cold with no witnesses, no suspects, and no answers. Aiden was a guy who lived for adventure and risk taking. He would often frequent theme parks and enjoy activities made only for the boat. He was the type of person to always do the opposite of what he was told. If a sign told him to not pass a certain point, not only did he ignore it, but he would nearly risk his life to prove how courageous he was, especially when accompanied with friends. One day, Aiden and his friends planned to have a night of spooky fun. They gathered at Aiden's apartment. So what do you guys want to do? His friend David asked. Let's watch Annabelle, his friend Jessica said. Nah, Annabelle has nothing on Chucky. He's the original cursed doll, Aiden said. Hi, I'm Chucky. I can do you one better, Leslie said. How about we get our own real life cursed doll? Where can we get that? Aiden asked. eBay. The friends all looked at Leslie like she was joking. Leslie pulled up a listing on the computer. See? Hunted 16-inch spiritual doll spirit vessel with supernatural paranormal power. That's not real, Aiden said in disbelief. No, but it is, Leslie proclaimed. How do you know, Aiden questioned. Because I just believe in that kind of thing, Leslie said. Look, I'll prove that it's not real. Aiden scrolled through the listings. Ooh, a vintage hunted plush teddy bear. That'll be perfect. Aiden made the order. It'll be here in three days, and I'll prove that this stuff is all made up. Three days finally pass. There's a knock at Aiden's door. He opens the door. No one's there. He looks down. There's a beautifully wrapped box with a bow on top. Aiden excitedly picks up the box and rushes to the dining room table. He opens the box to find a small, long-haired brown teddy bear with a scarf and a note. This bear is hunted. It will cause you to go crazy. If you can't take it, the only way to stop the curse is to give it away, but you have to include the total contents of the package. Aiden's hand wrapped around the bear's cushy belly as he stared into his bulging eyes. Later that night, Aiden met up with his friends. Has anything happened yet? David asked. No, nothing, Aiden responded. Hours later, Aiden was driving in peace to his home when all of a sudden, smoke appeared from the hood of the car. He stopped the car and opened his hood to smell something burning. Upon closer observation, a tube had appeared to overheat and busted, spilling out coolant. 
He hopped back in his car and slowly drove home as he watched the temp of his car increase. Finally home, he resolved to get the car repaired in the morning. When he walked to his door, he noticed that the porch light was going in and out. That's odd, he thought. He went into his home and prepared to shower. While he was in the shower, the water suddenly started to pour out steaming hot water. Aiden eagerly tried to turn the knob to cold, but the shower wouldn't budge. He jumps out the shower and tries to turn the shower completely off, but that doesn't work either. I'll call emergency maintenance, he thought. Sir, it'll take about one hour before anyone can get out there, the rep told Aiden. With the shower running in the background, Aiden began to wonder why his luck hasn't been great. Then he remembered his new teddy bear. He goes to the dining room to find the box, but no bear. He hears chattering nearby. He makes his way toward the living room where he hears the voices. An overwhelming dark feeling fills the pit of his stomach. To his relief, it's just the TV. But his moment of relief is spoiled when he turns to see Mr. Teddy Bear with only one of his eyes, sitting on his couch as if he was watching TV the whole time. Aiden suspects what Leslie said may actually be true. That night, Aiden would experience a series of weird occurrences, including illusions of people speaking in different rooms and appliances randomly going off. By the morning time, Aiden was exhausted from the lack of sleep and anxiety. Determined to get rid of the bear, he threw a coat on over his pajamas and grabbed the bear. Aiden searched high and low for someone to give the bear to, but there was no one in sight. He finally arrived at a park and took a break by sitting on a park bench. Just as he was getting a moment of peace, a large family in an SUV pulled up. Kids toppled out of the vehicle. Aiden got a surge of energy. Finally, some people. But who would he give the bear to? One kid was making a ruckus, pushing the other little kids, taking their toys. Aha, Aiden thought. He walked over to the kid. Hey kid, you want a bear? Aiden asked. No, that bear's ugly. The kid smirked. It's hunted. Aiden said matter-of-factly, Really? The kid responded, I haven't slept all night because of this bear. <laughs> Aiden said convincingly, All right. The kid took the bear. Thank you so much, kid. Aiden rushed away, leaving the kid holding the bear. Finally home, Aiden was relieved. His friends came over, and when he told them the story, they all had a good laugh. Leslie observed the box. Aiden, what's this? She held up a small round object. It was one of the bear's bulging eyes. Right then and there, the lights went out in the house. Did the electricity just cut out? A frightened Jessica asked. The shower turns on, and so does the TV. Uh, I guess I forgot to attach the eye back to the bear. <laughs> I just gotta laugh because I saw your reaction. I saw your reaction to the last part. <laughs> That brings and, back memories, Freddy Krueger. Yeah, you put some scary clips in there. That's that was scary. The um beginning that doll. Where did you <laughs> find that picture? That doll is hideous and it was scary too. It was kind of like, ugh. Like, okay, I don't even know why anybody would want to do it. Personally. There's some people in the world, like, you know, some people like to jet ski or go skydiving or hike big mountains and they do crazy things but then there's some people who love the abnormal or the supernatural and they like to test the spirits that's not me that's not me but these people <laughs> <laughs> you know they watch the movies um bloom house those movies that they come out with the conjuring and city is and annabelle and all those movies mm -hmm. and they were like hey we could do it in real life and they invited that entity or whatever it was into their own home by ordering off of eBay. I didn't even know eBay had this dark hole of toys that's considered hunted. Yeah, me <laughs> either, man. That's crazy. Like, I, I like watching horror films, scary movies. You yeah. know, I like going through haunted mazes. That's fun. Um, and I might even go and stay at, like, the place where they filmed The Shining. But I wouldn't go to like the real places, you know, like um, uh, that house where the conjuring happened, the base of oh, the yeah, story, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. conjuring happened, like real stuff happened there. Like, I'm not going to do that. I know that's right. <laughs> I'm going to do the fake fun stuff, the fake scary stuff. 
Mm, <laughs> me too. We just want to thank you guys for joining us on this supernatural show. And it's a to be continued for the next half. You can check us out at pabulumentertainment.com and you can find us on YouTube at Pabulum Entertainment. And you can also check out our sister partner, The Mouth Soap at themouthsoap.com and on Instagram at The Mouth Soap. Yes, and that co-sign, everything she just said. <laughs> so until next time, guys, see you later. Bye.